welcome to YouTube, welcome to my channel. So let me some cool like and subscribe. I'm about to do a review on the Shy season one. First, first of all, I'm not sure who the main character is in the show. Like normally there's that protagonist person. I'm not sure if it's Brandon or Kevin. Like I'm just throwing it out there, so don't judge me. Cause they both seem like they roles are significant in the bigger scale of the series, you know what I'm saying? But either way, I really enjoyed the first season. The first season had a lot of roller coasters of emotions that gripped you and also made you feel uneasy. Like, no, Brandon, don't do it type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? First, I'm going to talk about Brandon, first of all. I mean, like, his life totally dramatically changed for a while and he had to find his food his love for making food again I mean, like when his brother died first of all the kid who played his brother was amazing because he was so likable even though he was kind of doing some downright messed up stuff because basically starts with him stealing clothes from a dead body or dying person which was really fucked up he was charis charismatic he was smarter now, if you've watched my, um, on my block review, I talk about how I like smart mouth, eh? smart mouth, and he was one. Yeah. When, um, Ronnie, I think that's what his name, killed Jason, I um, Brandon's brother. Keep going back to the actor's name. When he killed Brandon's brother, that was a moment, y'all, because I knew... Brandon's brother was innocent, like you knew as the audience that everything was going off the rail. You knew that Brandon would try to get revenge from that point. And the fact that Kevin and Papa and Jack saw the whole incident kinda made them made you more anxious in that moment. That was the first few episodes. Then the show went other ways. You found Emmett being a fuckboy and impregnating a bunch of girls apparently he has three children we only met one of them like his journey was also off the rails of the whole scope of something and they're all kind of still you know in this small community like this one death Jason's death like made them all find each other in a sense because they were kind of like passing each other daily and they use like metaphorically the tuck shop you know the vendor shop street vendor no it's not a street vendor it's basically a store so it's, it's a tuck shop they use the tuck shop as a prime incentive to show how small the community is which I liked because they all found themselves there somehow involved and that's where and it was so close to where Jason and Brandon's brother died, that was poetic in itself. Then you got Reg, Jack's brother, who was intimidating from the jump, especially with Brandon about owing him the favor and wanting to collect when Brandon got a food truck and all that. Like he was just, until, until he got that ass beating, basically he showed that he was just the best minion overall, but he's running the gang. We're gonna see his character grow, become even more messed up person than he was because he basically recruited his young brother into the gang life. Oh, Caesar and Rich, don't they never learn? Anyway, um, Kevin's life was somewhat so romantic and so messed up at the same time because you saw a boy with his first crush trying to pursue her, her playing games with him him getting the upper hand, him breaking hearts unintentionally, but also a bigger secret that he, he shot a dude and he witnessed a dude get shot, like, it's weird how that's such a norm in the shot, like, a kid could still just go through a romantic period of his life, but also have this dark reality back home, you know what I'm saying? Not back home because his, his parents didn't know, his two mothers. 
there was also a cool norm. I really like how that was a norm. It wasn't really addressed. It wasn't like a big issue, especially normally in hood movies. It's a big issue when it's the same sex thing. You see people get jumped on, you see all that thing. To see how they were just happy, these two mothers, that's it, that is. Then I'm gonna talk about Quentin being Jason's dad. That was a twist I didn't see coming. Like, I thought there was a, there was gonna be a big end game to him wanting to know who Jason was while trying to get his dominance back in the streets. But I didn't know his dominance back in the streets involved his son being killed on top of that. And how Jason got killed was so fucked up, yo. Yo, that was so fucked up. Basically, the show ended with everybody somewhat in the next phase. Like Brandon and the food truck and Reg trying to exploit that experience. Then you got Ronnie going to jail because he felt guilty for killing Brandon's brother at the end and he found Allah. Like he's also also his journey went trippy as hell. But you know, yeah. There's no part to it actually. Reg running the gang and trying to you know, use Brandon's food truck is also going to be an interesting take. Also, using his brother's recital. Okay, since his brother dropped out of the recitals to have an alibi, that was savage. No, that wasn't the brother's recital. It was the brothers taking them out for ice cream and stuff like that, or food. I was like, yo, I thought he was being a group brother for an episode, but nah, he had an interior motive. That was trippy. I was like, god damn, isn't that just a rep representation of life? Like, life is that. English today. Oh my god. Anyway, Emmett, Emmett being a dad and trying to fight for his kid while his mother also kind of found a job somewhere else because he helped Ronnie with his gunshot wound and all that and she got into shit. I think that dude in the hospital snitched but he felt guilty about it and told her beforehand because she still got fired but you know, life but let's blame it on the cameras. <laughs> uh, Kevin being a witness now because he has to testify like there's no way about it. Like his mother found out she was out there partying and he, they danced on the school play which is so offbeat though. They should have picked a better song, just not make the dance a little more, or maybe they dance so awful. Like, let's give it up for that kid, the kid who plays Kevin. That dude's been in Moonlight, he's been in Black Panther, he's been in The Shy, he's been, you know, like, his career as a young person. Wow, impressive. He's been the cover of The Shy, so. Then, we got Quentin basically showing people him. Nothing to try it for on. Oh yeah, even Detective Cruz, how he was really involved with everybody. I mean like, now he has to investigate the death of the person he wanted to expose all along. Like he has to put his personal feelings aside and basically go after somebody else. Then Kevin, Papa and Jake, their friendship is rocky due to ex-gang affiliation right now so I'm really interested in how that goes down it's, especially now it's gonna come out that Kevin saw a murder and basically his life is gonna be tired because I know the, how the hood is big on no snitching it's big on no snitching but all in all I legit give this series a 9 out of 10 like, there were some moments where it felt like it was fillery, you know what I'm saying? Like Brandon and f fall, like fucking his his boss's girlfriend or fiance or wife, whatever. Those moments, the fact that his current girlfriend, his girlfriend at the beginning of the show, just forgave him because she fucked somebody too. His his cousin was cool. Like, I feel like some parts were fillers, you know what I'm saying? Even Ronnie and that drug dealer, the dude he sold the gun to, also felt like fillers. It's like, these are the neighborhood people. This is how life in the shot is. Like, in the larger scheme of the story, 
it wasn't as gravitating but it was understandable because it's part of the show put it that way yeah so oh i really enjoyed the show i'm excited for season two the kill the hurt common and lena yeah lena both made this this series happen showtime's killing the game uh big fan of shameless of some elf of catch fornication of i could go on and on showtime killing it right famous all these things but this was a great series. I'm excited for television. Television is moving forward in a great way. So, like and subscribe, join the channel, leave a comment if you want to listen to that. I know I didn't say that good people in my black country comment, but you know, dots are problems. But anyway, uh, follow my Instagram, my Twitter, the rest of the tag there. You know what I'm saying? Let's make this channel grow and I'm gonna keep dropping reviews of things I feel like I need to speak about. I'm about to watch Beyond Season 2. Bench watch the hell out of that. Maybe I'll review that after because I really enjoyed Season 1. But anyway, thank you for even clicking on this. Uh, deuces.